Apple appears to be falling behind when it comes to AI. How do you respond? I don't, I don't believe we are. Not too worried. Not too worried. <laughs> that was Johnny Shrouji and John Turnus in December of 2023. They sounded confident then, but fast forward to today, and everyone knows that Apple is indeed falling behind in AI. Siri is still years behind the competition and essentially broken. To give you an idea, in March of 2025, Robbie Walker, a senior director at Apple, called the delays of Apple intelligence during a meeting, quote, ugly and embarrassing. He went on to call the decision to publicly promote the technology before it was finished an absolute disaster. The AI features promised to customers never arrived, despite being advertised as the main hallmark of the iPhone 16, released over a year ago. Now, news has recently broke from Bloomberg that Apple is doing the unthinkable. There's such dysfunction within Apple's AI team that they're running to Google to fix their AI woes. In a deal that many couldn't imagine just a year ago, Apple plans to pay Google $1 billion a year to use a custom version of Gemini to power Siri. According to the report, for security reasons, this special version of Gemini will be running on Apple's private cloud. So it looks like Apple has admitted a rare defeat. But there's a couple of questions that we have to ask here. Firstly, how noteworthy is the integration of AI into mobile phones? Beyond a better voice assistant, do consumers even want it? AI isn't a feature that finds itself at the top of consumer considerations when choosing a new phone. Secondly, there's a broader question that arises from this deal. If you can just lease an AI model that's already made, what is the point of spending hundreds of billions to create your own AI model from the ground up? Sure, there might be a couple of reasons, but is it worth the cost with the current state of AI? What does that say about the trillions in investment flying around at the moment? It's something to think about. We'll explore these questions, how Apple ended up in this position in the first place, and what this embarrassing turn of events means for Apple. You are watching Tool Fusion TV. When you think about buying a new phone, what's at the top of your list of considerations? A lot of people would say price. Others would say battery life. Others still would say great cameras. But what's missing from most people's lists? AI capabilities. As reported by CNET, consumers care even less about AI in their phones than they did just last year. Quote, just 11% of US smartphone users choose to upgrade their devices because of AI features, a 7% drop to a similar survey last year. Further, about three in 10 people don't find mobile AI helpful and don't want to see more features added, end quote. And I'm sure the trend is similar for the rest of the world. But in the mobile world, AI really hasn't taken off as a must-have. For example, Samsung was so confident in their Galaxy AI that they thought a huge number of people would upgrade their phones just to get the AI. But when push came to shove, in the earning calls since, all Samsung has talked about is market weakness and economic uncertainty. It just goes to show that AI baked into phones can be a nice to have feature for some applications, but it simply isn't what consumers want, at least not yet. But that being said, Apple would benefit from a better Siri. I'm sure most users would like that. So what went wrong? It's great that you set this high bar. You're also Apple. I mean, you've got mm -hmm. more engineers, more cash than most companies, maybe any company. Why, can't, why couldn't you make it work? Siri has been eclipsed by Google's voice assistant since the mid 2010s, and the gap has only continued to grow larger. And throw some requests at Gemini and Siri to see which one actually delivers. Compare the Google Pixel 9 Pro XL against the iPhone 16 Pro Max. Once again, Gemini gave a full breakdown of key specs, similarities, and differences. Siri just handed over Google search links. Play the Friends theme song. Don't you disrespect me, man. Gemini nailed it again, opened YouTube Music and played the right track. Siri also opened YouTube Music but played some random song with friends in the title. For Apple, fixing Siri has become the most public struggle for the company. But finally, in 2024, things look like they're about to change. They announced a new Siri and Apple intelligence. But so far, it's largely turned out to be vaporware. Large swaths of what was promised never arrived in the hands of users. Instead of being able to execute in-app actions from screen context and personal data, what users really got was the same old Siri that couldn't even fulfill a simple request without providing a Google search or, 2024, passing off queries to ChatGPT 
and ChatGPT is also used for the writing tools feature, image generation, and on-screen analysis. So really, Siri isn't doing much of anything as it currently stands. After yet more delays since the 2024 announcement, in 2025, a new version of Siri was announced to finally be coming in the second quarter of 2026, but behind the scenes was pandemonium. In June of 2025, Apple's head of foundational AI left for Meta. Ruming Pang, who was in the lead position, was responsible for leading a 100-person team for Apple's LLM efforts. And it wasn't just him. Other top engineers within Apple's AI team began to leave. The new Siri and Apple intelligence disaster has been explained in our previous episode, but for those who didn't catch it, here are some of the problems that Apple faced. Inside Apple, the AI team fractured into two and started fighting against each other. The Siri team was way too slow. It took two years for Robbie Walker to figure out how to remove the Hey Siri command. And when ChatGPT dropped in December of 2022, the internal teams were sent scrambling and haven't stopped floundering ever since. Generative AI proved too inconsistent for Apple's typical level of control over their products. Finally, in 2024, Apple announced the new Apple intelligence and Siri, which didn't exist. Lawsuits for false advertising ensued. Internally within Apple, there's been finger pointing at who's to blame. Apple's AI engineering team says the marketing team is at fault for overhyping features before they were real, while the marketing team says that they were just working with the timelines given from the engineering team themselves. It was a mess. But as the blame game continued, Apple Intelligence and the new Siri still needed a solution. Apple tried talks with Anthropic, but they fell through due to Anthropic asking for too much money. Now, with little hope of stemming further delays, Apple has gone to Google for help. It's likely just to be a stopgap to get something out while they continue to work on their own AI model. Google's custom Gemini AI model for Apple will likely be around 1.2 trillion parameters, which is much larger than Apple's internal AI model, which stands at about 150 billion parameters. Parameters are just a rough measure of how capable a large language model is. For this privilege, Apple will reportedly pay Google $1 billion per year. The thing is though, Apple and Google have an interesting relationship already. Currently, Google spends $18 billion per year to keep Google Search the default search engine on iPhones. So for Apple to spend a fraction of that money back for a custom AI model isn't too bad of a deal considering how much cash Apple makes. According to Bloomberg, Gemini will be powering Siri's summary and multi-step planning functions. So you may have a question here. Google and user privacy aren't two words that you think would be in harmony with each other. So how does all of this fit in with Apple's privacy-first public image? Well, according to Bloomberg, quote, Apple believes that running the models on its own chips housed in Apple-controlled cloud servers, rather than relying on third-party infrastructure, will better safeguard user privacy. The company has already internally tested the feasibility of the idea, end quote. There's a prevailing view that Apple will be very quiet about the deal or any mention of Gemini in their upcoming promotional material. And that makes sense. Now let's talk about the wider implications of this story. There's two things going on here. Apple usually jumps into an emerging technology late, but they usually do it right, waiting for others to go first and make the mistakes. To me, it looks like Apple might not be happy with the state of AI at this stage. They think it needs more work before it's ready to meet their standards. This is new technology. Automating capabilities on devices in a reliable way, uh, no one's doing it really well. This just doesn't work reliably enough to be uh, an Apple product. It was again something we thought, as Craig said, we'd actually ship by later in the year. And Look, we don't want to disappoint customers, we, we never do, but it would have been more disappointing to ship something that didn't hit our quality standard, that had you know, an error rate that we felt was unacceptable. So we, we made what we thought was the best decision. I'd make it again, uh, so. If that's the case though, then why not just have no AI at all? Well, there would be pressure from shareholders and the expectation that a finished Apple Intelligence product should be arriving next year. And this is where Gemini's LLM as a stopgap comes into the picture. Secondly, this story is a possible hint that all the trillions in AI spending may not be the most efficient or sustainable way for any given company to make use of the emergence of generative AI as a technology. I'll use the analogy of a smartphone to attempt to explain what I mean. You can look at a smartphone in three parts. The first part is the hardware, which can be analogous to the AI data centers. It's the physical thing that everything runs on. 
Next is the operating system, iOS or Android, which could be analogous to the AI models. And lastly, we have the apps on the phone, which are analogous to the applications sitting on top of foundational AI models. So what OpenAI, Anthropic, XAI, Microsoft, Oracle, etc. are doing by spending billions is building the hardware and the operating systems. But maybe, just maybe, specifically for the AI industry, it's less effort and makes more sense to just build the apps. Why? Well, for the case of the AI industry, we could extrapolate things out and it's possible that the large language models of the future could just become a commodity. That is, some may be better than others in certain areas and they could have tweaks towards certain applications, but for general, simple requests for everyday users, they'd all function more or less the same. So if you're Apple, you don't focus on building the LLM, but you use an existing LLM to power an app, in this case, Siri. Now this wasn't their intention, but they may have just accidentally stumbled into a future cost-saving measure. Doesn't that though completely, not illegitimize, but basically challenge this idea that you have to spend in the AI race to keep ahead. If you have a company like Apple that basically figures we can partner with people, we don't need to spend and we can still benefit, does that just show you you don't need to participate in the arms race for every other company that is? Apple isn't the first major phone manufacturer to do this though. Licensing third-party AI is what Samsung has done when they built Galaxy AI on top of Google's Gemini. But what does all of this mean for Apple? While it's embarrassing, Apple's bottom line will be fine. Tim Cook wouldn't be losing much sleep over this hiccup. Apple's iPhone sales slump is largely over thanks to stronger demand for the iPhone 17 in China. According to Bloomberg, new iPhone sales are up 29% year on year. And on the MacBook side of things, they're finally slowly starting to gain market share as their chips are efficient, have great battery life, and more users are becoming frustrated with Windows 11. Windows sucks. Now, I worked on Windows and most of my code is likely still in there, so of course I'm personally invested. Privacy and telemetry, being forced into a Microsoft account during setup, updates that surprise like a SWAT team advance, and the general feeling that your desktop is the last unmonetized surface in a world that hates empty space. So it really isn't the end of the world for Apple, but it's still a fascinating turn of events. So what do you guys think? Do you think AI within smartphones is pretty stupid? Do you think AI-powered assistants are the only exception? Or do you love AI all over your phone? Let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, that's about it from me. My name's Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Fusion. It's new thinking.